Good morning everyone, it's uh, great to be here as the Minister of Veterans Affairs with uh, uh, Andrew, Jen and also uh, Christophe. Uh, good morning, it's great to be here this morning with, uh, with, as the Minister of Veterans Affairs. We've got Andrew, Jen and uh, Stuart behind me. Um, and first up I want to make it quite clear that the South Australian Government is very, very passionate about the, uh, the health and well-being of our Defence Force across the border, and in particular those who may be uh, transitioning from the Defence Force into the, into the public sector. Now, uh, the opportunity is, uh, we've got uh, a, an opportunity through uh, Veterans SA, uh, the Employer Networking System, where just I launched that a couple of weeks ago, and we had 15 companies uh, that, are, that are coming into this networking, and now that's more than doubled in the two, last two weeks. The whole idea of that is to uh, be able to promote uh, to the private sector businesses and also to the public sector, and that's what we're here today, uh, the opportunities for people to understand and know that the great attributes and, and the experience that some of our people, all of our people, that are currently in the Australian Defence Force that may be transitioning out have got great expertise and experience and things like that here. And today we have uh, three people here behind me that have transitioned from the Australian Defence Force in the various organisations into the public sector and this is the into the, uh, into the, uh, the Far East and also the Safe Hole and so forth. And so I am very passionate about making certain we look after those people and be able to give them meaningful employment once they've got out of the Defence Force. And so today is about promoting that and hearing firsthand from these people behind me some of the uh, challenges um, and the experience they may have had coming out of the Defence Force and how they transition into the public sector in Hong Kong. Thank you. Stuart. Let's ask Stuart to come forward if you can first. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Minister, and good morning. My name is uh, Stuart McLean and I'm a very proud South Australian police officer having served the South Australian police for 35 years. For about 24 of those years, I've also been an active member of the Royal Australian Air Force Reserve. And if people were to ask me, what do you do for a living? It's a relatively simple question to answer. I say, well, I'm a police officer, but I'm also an airman. But at the heart of it for me, is actually about community service and creating safer communities. I've been able to dedicate my life to creating a safer community in South Australia, focused on those issues that we were policing, which is around those sort of domestic and local issues. But I've also had the opportunity to contribute to the security of the nation and through his opportunity to be deployed overseas, also for international security. So for me, my service to the community is about community safety broadly, and I've been able to do that wearing a police uniform and also wearing an Air Force uniform. It's an exciting time just now to join South Australia Police. We are actively recruiting and aim to recruit 900 police officers in the next three years, which means on average we'll be starting a recruit course every month. And we're actively targeting people who are self-disciplined, highly motivated, accustomed to working in a team environment and dedicated to serving their community. And for me, that describes veterans perfectly. So if you're a member of the Australian Defence Force, if you're a veteran and you're looking for a career change, perhaps you belong in blue. You can come to South Australia Police as a police officer and utilise those skills you've developed in your career in military service. And I'm talking here about communication skills, problem solving, lateral thinking, decisiveness, comfortable working in a team, comfortable working in a dynamic, rapidly evolving environment. That is policing and these are experiences you gain during your military career. So my message today to veterans is a simple one. If you happen to be in South Australia, if you're currently posted here, and you're thinking of a career change, you want to settle down in this great state, perhaps you belong in blue. Perhaps you are South Australian born and bred, but you're now posted elsewhere in the country and you're thinking about returning home and you're looking for that career change, you want to come back to South Australia, perhaps you belong in blue. There are many similarities between military service and a career in policing. I have found that there are a lot of police officers in South Australia police who have military experience. And the great news is this, your military career does not have to end when you join the police. We support reserve service, there's opportunities to continue with your reserve service. And in fact, my entire service with the ADF has been as a reservist. 
including a period of extended leave from the police when I was deployed on operations due to a period of continuous full-time service. The opportunity to continue your military career through the reserve and be South Australian police officer and to continue serving the community, uh, perhaps you belong in blue and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Thank you and good morning. My name is Genevieve Ruger and I've been a firefighter with the South Australian Metro. I've been a firefighter with uh, the MFS since 2019. Previous to that, for 22 years, I was an army officer and a helicopter pilot. Jim, why the fires? So, so what inspired me to join the fire service was actually a conversation. And uh, I was asked, I, was, I, was, I had arrived back in South Australia as a posting in the army. And after 20 years, I thought, it's, uh, I'm now in the right location, I'm back with family. And uh, what next? Time. Um, my passion is to serve and coming to South Australia was the right move for my family but it was, it was as far away from uh, service and flying that I had ever been. So I was thinking what next and I was encouraged to talk to a, a mate who I had previously flown with in Defence who was a current serving MFS employee and it took that one conversation to, uh, to completely inspire me. Um, he talked about being self-motivated. He talked about working as a team. He talked about leadership opportunities. He talked about uh, being mentally fit, physically fit, and having an adventure along the way with a great team of people. For me, that was all big ticks in the box, uh, and I explored that further. And I explored that by talking to other firefighters about the role. And uh, and the transition then was uh, was the next next obvious next step for me. Just to pick up on, on, on what Stuart made about the, the transfer of skills, did, did you find that as you progressed from Army into the MFS? Yeah, so the, the transfer of skills is, a, is sometimes a difficult one because Defence doesn't give you a piece of paper for each skill you, uh, you collect along the way. Uh, but over 22 years of service, uh, we are, I'm not my role, I'm not just a pilot, I had various roles, so I was uh, second in charge of a flying school, I've been an operations officer, I've been a um, uh, aviation safety officer for a regiment of around 120 people. When I moved to Adelaide here, I was a, a specialist recruiter in the diversity space at Defence Force Recruiting, and finally, uh, as a reservist, uh, the, the last year of my service was as a reservist, and that was as a rotary wing specialist in uh, aviation medicine. So none of my, a lot of these skills I've acquired along the way don't have a piece of paper attached, which um, is difficult for some employers to understand. Um, that, was, that was very welcomed when I came uh, into the MFS and went through the recruiting process. It was, uh, it was already understood that those skills um, were obvious. If I was asked to, uh, to talk about message to, to uh, give to other defence employees and that would be to have the conversation. We have fire stations all over Adelaide, uh, we have fire stations regionally, we have, there's, there's firefighters interstate if that's where you're living at the moment and you'd like to move back to South Australia. Be brave enough, be bold enough to have that conversation, rock up at a, uh, a fire station, make a phone call uh, to the fire station if you need be and have that conversation. Something that uh, won't be a challenge is starting the conversation about uh, the role as a firefighter because you'll be hard pressed to find a firefighter that doesn't enjoy uh, talking about their job. Uh, you will be hard pressed possibly winding that conversation up again. Thank you. I just had a quick question for Stuart. That's okay. You talk about the transfer of skills, but what sort of roles in the police force are we talking about here? Yeah, so when you join South Australia Police, you join as a general duty that's the entry point for all police officers, but of course there's a variety of career opportunities once you do your initial training uh, as a general duties patrol officer. The sort of skills I'm talking about though are those general skills that you develop through a military career that are directly relevant to a career in policing. I'm speaking about problem solving, lateral thinking, that sort of a confidence 
that comes uh, with the sort of training you get for your military training is directly transferable into the operation of the police environment. It's also the rapidly evolving nature of police work. Police work is dynamic, things change quickly, and it takes a certain sort of person to be comfortable to operate in that environment, and I've found military training prepares you for that. And so if you have experience working in a team environment, you're comfortable with that sort of ambiguity, rapidly evolving environment, those skills are directly transferable into policing. And the great news about South Australia Police, you enter as a general duties constable and do policing anywhere throughout the state, you have opportunities in the metropolitan area, opportunities in regional South Australia, but you then can take your career further. And that is one difference between military service and policing. In the military, people are primarily recruited to do a particular job, a specialisation, um, a mustering, a category, that is your career. Uh, in policing, you do have the ability to move into different areas. When you use the word veteran, I guess it conjures up an older age bracket, but what sort of ages are we appealing to here? Yeah, so we're appealing to, I mean, the term veteran is it's a generic term, uh, so we're definitely appealing to uh, anyone who's currently serving in the, the Australian Defence Force, someone who has gone out of the Defence Force in recent years. Um, we're welcome to receive applications for anyone who wishes to apply. There's no set age uh, limit for people to apply to South Australia Police. Uh, we are currently targeting people who are coming out as school leavers, but also people who have vast work experience as well. So don't be concerned about how old you are, and the term veteran will refer to that. We're talking about people who have some military service, and I'm including people who are still in serving today. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about the SA, uh, Veterans of Safe Career and Business uh, Mentoring Program, how that works and how people get involved? Well, to, uh, today, <coughs> we've got the, uh, just recently the, uh, the Veterans Employer Network. The whole idea of that is for, to, uh, for Veterans SA to be able to communicate with private sectors out there, the industries out there, and we just had that with, uh, a couple of weeks ago with BAE. And then we're, what we've done there is then we want to be able to increase that into the public sector. So what happens there is that the, these people come into the networking system, they can actually talk and, for example, say Andrew or somebody like might apply to one of those organisations and then they, that doesn't fit, they have got no fitting. But the networking nights will be, and these things here, those organisations and groups will be able to talk and say, well look, I've got this particular person who's got these attributes and both the, the, both the speakers before have indicated their expertise, their experience and things like that. And the difference there is that sometimes in the Defence Force, uh, and I'm a veteran from years and years ago, but at the end of the day is they don't have a piece of paper. So they've got that expertise, and sometimes our veterans are not aware of what they've already learned over those many years on close discipline and things like that. The whole thing about the networking system going forward, uh, we had uh, 15, as I said earlier, uh, just two weeks ago when we had the launch. Now we've got over double the number of employ uh, companies and, and groups that attending that. We want to grow that. It's about communicating and talking about each other's and what they've got out there. So if programs like you as an organisation, you've heard somebody but you don't have a position for that, somebody over here may have a position for it, so you can give that particular person's name to that other organisation, whether it's the private sector or it's the public sector, and so those people can get meaningful employment going forward. The whole thing about our veterans is that they've, they've served on the front line in various organisations, various, uh, various roles, etc. And what they have the opportunity to do now is to actually serve in various roles, frontline roles, in, 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 in the emergency service in this sector today. But they've also, in others, they've got the opportunity to talk to the a, a, a BAEs and, and so forth, and their expertise there can assist us with our defence opportunities for this great state. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Thanks,